The Israeli military says it can now confirm that it has killed Marwan Issa, the deputy commander of Hamas's military wing. Israel says he was killed by an airstrike earlier this month that targeted the central Gaza Strip. Another senior Hamas commander was also reportedly killed in that same attack. This evening, after checking all the intelligence at our disposal, we have established with certainty, based on solid intelligence, that Marwan Issa was killed in the strike we carried out approximately two weeks ago, along with Ghazi Abu Tama'a. Marwan Issa was the deputy of Mohammed al daif and one of the planners of the October 7th massacre, while Ghazi Abu Tama'a was the former commander of the Hamas Central Brigades and was in charge of weapons manufacturing in Hamas. They were killed in a targeted and precise strike based on information we received from military intelligence and Shin Bet, and in which the army used substantial and unconventional operational capabilities. We will pursue our noble efforts to track down and target Hamas leaders. Well, we can now speak to Osama Hamdan. He's the senior spokesperson for Hamas. He joins us now from Beirut. Mr. Hamdan, is Marwan Issa dead? Everybody knows that Marwan Issa is one of the major commanders of Al-Qassam brigades, and everybody knows that the Israelis have been saying since day one that they want to target the Al-Qassam and Hamas commanders in the Gaza Strip. However, in the absence of an official statement from Hamas or Al-Qassam confirming the martyrdom or wounding of any of its commanders or members, we cannot confirm such information. Have you, sir, heard anything from the al Qassam Brigades, your military wing, as to Mr. Issa's whereabouts and safety? This information is not usually traded inside the movement. The whereabouts or information pertaining to the safety or, or al Qassam commanders is not information that is exchanged internally. However, in the absence of a statement by al Qassam brigades about the martyrdom or wounding of any of its leaders, then uh, the information published by the enemy is not deemed as confirmed. It could very well be part of a psychological war that is waged by the occupation against the resistance and the Palestinian people. So just to, to be clear with our viewers at the moment, Mr. Hamdan, you're saying that you have no information as to Mr. Issa's whereabouts or safety because the military wing has not shared that information with you. I understand that he was acting as a sort of courier for the captive negotiations. Some mediators have been saying that he's not been seen for some time. Are those talks being affected? First off, it's not about information sharing. I can confirm that any information pertaining to the safety or any attack against any of our commanders is something that is announced by the al Qassam leadership. Regarding the negotiation process, there is a Hamas delegation that uh, handles the negotiations. These negotiations were recently thwarted by the Israeli side, and our brother, the Mujahid Marwan Isa, was not present in any negotiation sessions. And I think that any talk about him not participating or appearing in the negotiations until now is part of the Israeli claims that they succeeded in reaching him and assassinating him. Another Israeli claim that we're hearing today is that you, Hamas, have rejected a proposal for a deal, and that action apparently shows the damage that's been done by the UN Security Council resolution that was passed demanding an immediate ceasefire. Can I ask you for your response to that and perhaps your assessment of how those talks are going? Quite frankly, the occupation did not put forward any proposals. The side that submitted an accurate proposal to put an end to the aggression and to conduct the swap was actually the Hamas movement, and this garnered praise by the mediators. However, 
The response that we received from Netanyahu's government two days ago confirmed their rejection of our proposal, and we believed that what actually encouraged the U.S. administration to abstain from voting against the Security Council resolution was the realization by the U.S. administration that the side that is actually thwarting the negotiations is the Israeli side. Therefore, the uh, Security Council resolution did not cause any damage, as claimed by the Israeli government. However, this resolution confirmed that the continuation of the Israeli aggression and the continuous efforts by the Israelis to thwart the negotiations will push the international community towards resolutions that until recently were very impossible to reach due to the U.S. veto. The Israeli delegation has reportedly left Doha. Can I ask you what the situation is? Are the talks ongoing? Are you optimistic that there is a conversation to be had? We have relayed a clear position based on the unacceptable Israeli response. We have informed the mediators of our position, and this position can be summarized in two points. One, any deal that is reached must accomplish the Palestinian demands, putting an end to the aggression, a pullout of occupation forces, allowing the refugees to return to their homes and provide them with aid, ensure the reconstruction of Gaza. And in return for that, we are willing to conduct an acceptable and equitable prisoner swap. The mediators have relayed our stance to the Israeli delegation, and it is possible that they went back to their country country for further consultation with the Zionist entity's government. Uh, Mr. Hamdan, I, I want to ask you for clarity on the Hamas position, because a Hamas spokesperson yesterday told me on Al Jazeera that you are only open to releasing captives if an agreement with Israel is reached. That's in violation of the UN Security Council resolution that was just passed. Is that still your position? The resolution of the Security Council states that uh, prisoners and captives must be released from both sides. So we have approximately 13,000 Palestinian prisoners that were arrested during the war. And before that, we had several thousands that were arrested. And there should be a clear mechanism to release the prisoners being held by the Israeli side. And we have been very clear if there is a ceasefire and if uh, Palestinian prisoners are released, it would only be um, fair for us to release the Israeli captives uh, in our custody. What we want is putting an end to the aggression and releasing the captives. However, it was the Israelis who refused the Security Council's resolution and not Hamas. On the contrary, Hamas welcomed the resolution and we asked that there be practical mechanisms that actually force the occupation to commit to this resolution and abide by it and implement it. And the Security Council resolution did actually call for the unconditional release of captives, but I do hear that you are saying that you require some kind of an agreement in order to go forward. Uh, we'll leave it there for now. Osama Hamdan, the senior spokesperson for Hamas, speaking to us today from Beirut. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the Al Jazeera News Hour and for your time. Oh, I'm sorry, just to please, clarify. Please go just ahead. Just to clarify. Quite frankly, the Security Council resolution, first off, stated that there should be a ceasefire followed by a prisoner release. And therefore, the Security Council resolution prioritizes a ceasefire on the prisoner release. And when there is a ceasefire, we will be glad to engage in a prisoner swap. Thank you for that clarification, Mr. Hamdan. And thank you again for your time here on the Al Jazeera News Hour. Well, let's now go to our correspondent, Hamda Salhut, in occupied East Jerusalem. Hamda, just coming back to what we've been hearing from the Israelis about Marwan Issa, this strike that they say killed him happened some two weeks ago. What new information are the Israelis sharing or saying that they've received now in order to confirm his death? 
The Israeli army is saying that based on intelligence they've gathered from both the military and the Shin Bet, they've now drawn the conclusion that Marwan Isa was killed in that airstrike in central Gaza a couple of weeks ago. The Americans, however, on March 18th said that based on their own intelligence gathering, they were able to confirm themselves that Marwan Isa was killed in that airstrike where the Israelis were still working to confirm it. Now, again, we have not seen any of this intelligence or any of this information that the Israelis are are saying Hamas itself has said that they don't have any information on the matter, but it goes back to Israel saying that it is going to accomplish every single one of the goals and objectives that it set out to achieve in the beginning of this war. And one of the main ones was dismantling Hamas both militarily and politically. They've been saying it for months, nearly six months, in fact, that they are going to go after all Hamas leadership, not just in Gaza, but all over the world. And that includes both political figures and military figures. Daniel Hagari had said that Marwan Isa was, in fact, one of the people who planned the October 7th attack, saying that he was third in command to Yahya Sinwar and Muhammad al-Dif. And this is the highest figure in Hamas's military wing that the Israelis are claiming they have killed in Gaza. And they say that they're going to continuously go after people in Hamas, both fighters on the ground and leadership, despite the fact that this catastrophic and dire humanitarian situation has unfolded in Gaza with more than 32,000 Palestinians who've been killed as a result of Israel's war. Hamda Salhut there with all the latest for us from occupied East Jerusalem. Thank you very much, Hamda.